This is the High School Football America podcast for February the 24th, 2020. I'm Jeff Fisher. All right, heading to Brownsburg, Indiana, northwest of uh, Indianapolis. And uh, for those of you that have been following along on HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com for uh, uh, the last four or five days, we've been having a lot of fun. And uh, it all began when uh, Brady Mutton in, in Penargel, Pennsylvania, was hired as a 23-year-old. And I decided, well, who is the youngest varsity head football coach in America? And that journey began. And from all parts of America, people have been checking in. And uh, one person that uh, right now is in the top two, as best we can tell. We're going to continue our search, but uh, he began his uh, head coaching career uh, when he was 22 years old. Uh, he guesses somewhere around 22 years and about five or six months when he was hired at uh, Edwards County High School in Illinois. He's had a highly successful uh, career, a couple of state championships in Indiana. I think he's either at 300 wins or he's above that. Uh, John Hart is uh, the man who's now the head coach at uh, Brownsburg High School. He's still doing it. He's a little bit older. I don't know. I, I've got a lot of gray hair. Maybe he does too, but he's on the line right now to talk about what it was like to be 22 years old with a whistle and probably most people older than him when he was the head coach there. Welcome to the show, coach. Thank you very much. It was, uh, it's kind of funny. I, some of those players are now 50 uh, and have grandkids. So uh, we, we were four years apart, I, but I was best man in my quarterback's uh, wedding that's uh, hilarious. First, yeah, yeah, that's how young I was. <laughs> well, well t- tell me a little bit about that. You know, what uh, what got you so crazy that you thought you uh, were able to be a head coach and you put, I guess you put in resumes back then. I don't know. Maybe it's a little different, but take us back then. What was that like? How did you get the job? Why did you think that you could be a head coach at 22? Well, uh, I was coached uh, by Verwin Myers, who was a Hall of Fame football coach. And uh, then I went and worked for him. At a, he moved schools, and I went and worked for him for two years while I was working on my uh, undergraduate and master's degree. And uh, and he he started paying me. And uh, after my after my second year, he goes, John, I know you. This sounds stupid, but I think you're ready to be a head football coach. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so uh, the only job I got an interview for was uh, Edwards County. They. Uh, um, I, I'm not for sure the story anymore, but I, I remember parts of it, but they had only scored three points the year before I got there. Mm. Willie, the toe kicked one, uh, right at the end of regulation. Uh, and that was the only point they had scored. And, uh, and then, uh, so I think I was a good applicant because nobody else wanted the job. Well, you know, thank thank goodness Willie the Toe was that. I, that's <laughs> the, my my favorite name I've ever had on the darn show. But that's so wonderful. <laughs> John Hart is on the line uh, talking about uh, being uh, what we believe either the the, the youngest or the next to youngest uh, head coach in high school football through the years. He's been doing it now for uh, uh, you're going to be closing in on four decades there, coach. And um, let's let's kind of keep keep in that area back there. There, instead of getting to the present too quickly, um, you were 22 years old. You mentioned how close an age you were to the other kids. What were some of the the, the things you had to get used to? Uh, because you're now the leader. You're the guy giving the inspirational talk. Where four years earlier, you were probably listening to it. <laughs> no doubt. And and again, I was. I had a great high school coach and great mentor. But uh, uh, the other funny thing about Edwards County, they were in the process of building a new school, so they accidentally run the the game field so i had all nine games on the road so oh, we geez. went from a yeah, the team that only scored three points to uh, uh playing all nine games on the road and uh and we actually had a pretty good year we went we went three and six which was uh a, a remarkable year back then uh but it was uh it was so fun it, it you it's amazing uh the transition as a as a coach and the sensitivity and how you change and yet kids only care about, and I know it's an old cliche. They only care if you care about them. Mm-hmm. And man, I, I, they, they would go through a brick wall. I knew nothing. I knew nothing. I was coaching quarterbacks. And I was a defensive lineman. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> needless to say, we were running the wishbone. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, great story is going to come out of John here, I think. Uh, coach John Hart, he's at Brownsburg High School in Indiana right now. Uh, began his uh, high school football coaching career at uh, 22 years and some months in, in Illinois. And, you know, one of the things, and, and I, I've had the opportunity through the 10 years we've done this show to have some younger coaches on. And one of the, the questions I always ask and I always like to hear the answer to is, you know, generally speaking, when you put together your staff or maybe the staff that you actually had in place there, you're you're younger than them too. So talk a little bit about, uh, you know, earning the trust of your assistant coaches, because I'm sure that's one of the keys, you know, aside from the kids, obviously. You know, every place I've been, I, I tell people this all the time, I, especially to kids, I've, I've always had a mentor and you go like, oh, you're 57. And what, you don't need, you don't have a mentor here. And I, I really do. He's a young guy, but you know, Casey Poppenfoos is a, uh, I would say a mentor for me because he, he he has wisdom and you know he has great tools in the toolbox and he's not afraid to to, to challenge things in a respectful way without it being a, a you know some kind of issue uh i talk freely i'm pretty tough on coaches uh but yet i think they, i think the key is almost like with the players if you're willing to to put yourself out there and and i will for my coaches i they i've had great ones every place i've been but Back when I was at Edwards County, I had a guy by the name of Bill Kinsey. Uh, his son is the offense coordinator at Trine now, I believe. But uh, uh, Bill was one of those guys. Is like he would always kind of stop me before I would do something, uh, I don't know, where you just kind of do it spontaneous and go like, hey, here's what could go wrong. And, and <laughs> lots of times they did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the odds are usually uh, against you or with you, depending which way you want to look at that. Uh, John Hart, the uh, current head coach at Brownsburg High School in Indiana, uh, has won a couple of state championships, one of them coming at a team that a lot of people probably know around the country because it's definitely a, an Indiana, uh, Indianapolis power there in Warren Central. That's where the championship came. And, um, you know, as we kind of now start moving forward, let's let's talk. I'm sure you're not running the wishbone anymore. Let me just double double check that before I ask the question. You're not running the wishbone, right? <laughs> no, it's, it's it's a spread, but uh, there's still a little bit of wishbone in me. Okay, okay. so every once in a while, I, I still I still feel it. <laughs> All right, so so here's where I'm going with the question. Then, so you know, dialing it back to whatever that was, 35, 36, how many of our years ago? Um, what are some of the things in that foundation you built as a 22 year old HC to 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 what you're doing now at Brownsburg? Are there a couple of things that are just John Hart like right on through the career? Well, I don't know that anybody would say like I was the the brightest football coach they they ever had or the the most gifted, uh, but I think all of them uh, would, I, I hope all of them would say is that, uh, that I cared about them. I cared about the, the least uh, talented player to the kid that's uh, the, the all American and um, shoot. I'm telling you that I, about once a month, a group of us still talk from Edwards County. Uh, it's text messages now. Uh, but uh, recently I was put in the, the hall of fame at Mount Carmel, which was my next step. And, uh, and that was the, as they got up and talked about me and stuff, uh, again, I think the number one thing they, that they said and, and made me proud, uh, you know, that dash on your tombstone is that I cared about them and uh, I had a passion for them. And, and, uh, and I love the game. I, I feel as good about the game now as I did 35 years ago. Oh, that's wonderful to hear, and that's why we do this show to try and talk about guys like yourself uh, that uh, that do it for the kids, right? Uh, no, nobody's getting rich being a high school football coach. And oh, by the way, the hours have gone up through the years, and there that that is probably a, a good question to ask. You know, what are some of the biggest differences uh, from uh, then and now? You know, I, I know everybody else thinks that's really changed. I, I think it's changed what you're allowed to do. Uh, but we've always kind of been a, a, a four day a week, uh, you know, team that worked out and now and I'm at Brownsburg and it's a beautiful school and we have, uh, weightlifting during the, uh, during the school day, but we still have speed development and everything else, uh, before or after school. So, uh, I, I think if you really love what you're doing and, and we, me and my wife, we have four kids and, uh, and, we they came everywhere with me. I mean they they went to football games. I I, I was a head girls basketball coach for a little while while I was a head football coach. 
I was an indoor football coach for a little while while I was a head high school coach. Oh, geez. And they, <laughs> they traveled with me everywhere. I mean, they, they've just uh, uh, locked on, and it's, it's been a great journey. And, and it, it gives me a good uh, – you tossed me a softball there for my next question. It gives me a good segue into the fact that uh, when you reached out to me uh, when we were talking, you said, well, you know, all of my kids, and I think even a, one of you, maybe a son-in-law is a coach too, so obviously uh, dragging the kids around and all that, you, you rubbed off on them a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about the kids and going into – we're going to call it now the family profession, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, my wife and I have been married 35 years, so uh, – and when we moved to Albion, we started having babies uh, uh, right then. So it was basically footballs and babies, okay? Because <laughs> this is G-rated, right? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we started having ba- and and like I said, they, they kind of came along with me everywhere. So my oldest son has had incredible experience uh, or success at Gibson Southern. He was my OC during both, both uh, state championships. And uh, and my youngest son uh, was the backup quarterback for one and the starting quarterback for the other, and uh, and then uh, my oldest daughter is a head girls basketball coach. I think she started at twenty five, uh, and then uh, our twenty three, and then my youngest daughter Kristen is a volleyball coach, and I think she was a head coach at twenty three, and then Derek, my youngest son, uh, he was a head coach right after me, like twenty three. Wow, that is so neat. Uh, I, I'm assuming that the uh, Thanksgiving, the holiday table, uh, uh, you, you chat a little bit about uh, some X's and O's or stuff like that, or is it, uh, you know what, when you're on the field, you're on the field, and when you're off the field, you're family? You know, it, it, people always wondered how that would go at, at our house. Uh, when they were playing, it was really kind of hands-off, and it's a little bit how I treat our players. We can of start talking about goals and you know, it might be school, it might be whatever else, and uh, but uh, we we never really kind of browbeat them on the on the football or, or any sport as far as that goes. Now we spend a lot of time in the gym, you know, working on whatever skill or, or interest our kids had at that time. But uh, but no, at Thanksgiving it was uh, I, I think uh, Americano. We were we were all in the, just having a good time and. Uh, and harassing each other as much as we possibly could. <laughs> John Hart on the line, uh, Brownsburg, Indiana, the head coach there, but has had a very, very uh, good career. Uh, we took him all the way back to, to maybe being the youngest HC in America in uh, Albion, in Illinois, there at uh, Edwards County. And uh, we'll, we'll have one more question about the, the family there. So, um, you know, who, who's most like dad uh, when it comes to being the, the guy in charge? Uh, I bet you it's the girls, but I don't know. I'll let you answer. Gosh, you're, no wonder why you're so good at this. I think almost everybody would. <laughs> I, I would think everybody would say Brittany, my oldest daughter, is the basketball coach. Uh, is, is probably the most like me uh, personality wise. Uh, the rest of them got a good dose of my wife, and good for them. Uh, <laughs> the, um, everybody would always say, anytime our kids would do something dumb, they'd go like, oh, that's John Hart. And then if they did something right, they'd go, oh, that's Jenna. <laughs> And and you know what you and and we we're gonna you got her name in there and I was gonna ask you that question because one of the most uh, underlooked I guess um, parts of coaching is the significant other and 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 what they have to give up I know you took the kids around and all that um, but you know it's you giving up your time for other kids right so um, tell me a little bit about especially when you were young right you're a newlywed she's pregnant as you said right out of the box there uh, you, what, what, how 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 helpful has she been in your career time to wax eloquently and get a couple of brownie points even though it's after valentine's day you know there's zero doubt who uh was the impact person in our kids life and it was it was it was jan uh i i was the big toy i i had a lot of fun with them but the actual impact in their lives and stuff was was her she's an she's an incredible mom and and deserves all the credit i i think that if the kids uh, are telling the truth, they, you know, they they always want to tie, you know, me to them because of coaching. But the reason why they're in education and and uh, and, and good fathers and mothers is is a hundred percent my wife. 
Yeah. They, you can't do it without a uh, good woman by your side. The wind beneath your wings. John Hart is on the line from ba- Brownsburg uh, High School in Indiana. And let's uh, kind of shift a, a little forward here on the journey. And, and you know, obviously, um, because you got started so young at 22 years old, the, the idea is, you know, you start as a position coach. Hopefully you move up to an OC or a DC and then eventually you become a head coach. Well, that happened pretty quickly for you. So tell us a little bit about the journey that's taking you to various places. Is, uh, between Illinois and Indiana, what what were the move? What was behind the moves, if you will? Well, you know, it, it, there's a funny story that only a few people know. But when I left Edwards County, it was all about getting my wife. It's a real small school district. Was getting my wife a teaching job too. Mm. And uh, so Anna Jonesboro in Illinois offered us a job, and it was about three hours away. So we we pack up our bags, we move after five years at Edwards County. We're there six weeks, and then Mount Carmel, Illinois, which is down in southeastern Illinois, uh, was kind of a powerhouse of southern Illinois. Their job comes open, and uh, the the athletic director calls me and asks if I would be interested. Of course, I say yes, and so we <laughs> repack. <laughs> and the, the people of Indiana were very, very nice to me, which they didn't have to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we moved. We, we had a six-week move uh, where we were – Moved three hours, and Albion and Mount Carmel are like 10 miles apart. So we moved <laughs> all one back three hours. So, uh, so we did that, and we were there 11 years and had several undefeated teams, and uh, our kids were, were kind of raised there, and, and, uh, and it's one of the football America it could be shot right in, in Mount Carmel, Illinois. They, they are just wonderful people. Uh, that's that's so neat, and that's kind of why we do it. Because you know, while the it's fun to to tell the you know do our uh, national rankings for a top one hundred, and you see a Warren Central in there or whatever, it's really those other places, right? That uh, that mm-hmm. that make the sport so special. Uh, John Hart on the line, head coach at uh, Brownsburg. He's been doing it for uh, over three three centuries, heading more toward four. I read the the write up when you took the job at Brownsburg there, and some of the I guess seventy five uh, percent of the games you've won, uh, some state championships. A Along, along the way. So let's uh, let's just kind of you know fast forward to uh, coming Indiana into Indiana. There, yeah, I think you won state championships. What in 07 and and ten or nine or something like that at two different schools. Tell us a little bit about when uh, the success comes because let's face it, uh, the top of the high school football world, aside from shaping young people's lives, is winning that uh, that gold medals in some state somewhere, right? So what was that like yep. for you? It, it was awesome and. In, in if anybody's never been to Evansville, right. It's probably got the, the best, uh, relic, maybe a uh, stadium in, in the country. So it's a bowl built in the end of world war two. Mm-hmm. And it is incredible. Five, six, seven. We've had as many as, as, as 8,000 people, uh, in that stadium. Uh, it was awesome. One of the greatest atmospheres you'll ever see. And, uh, Back uh, in 2007, we won the state championship, and Paul McIntosh was our quarterback. He won Mr. Football, the only person south of, of Bloomington, Indiana, to ever win it, uh, won it uh, at Evansville Rights. And uh, it was just an incredible time, and uh, and the, the speed of it. And uh, people always ask me, what's the best part of a, winning a state championship? And I said, man, every other year you you, you have to put your pads up after a loss. <laughs> and winning that thing is a nice, a nice feeling. Um, but right as soon as we won it, the, we fast forwarded right into a couple of weeks later. I was hired at Warren Central, and then uh, two years later, then uh, Nick, like I said, was my uh, was my OC, and then uh, then Derek was our starter, and we won in uh, triple overtime uh, versus uh, Carmel on a rule that the national federation, or I was told national federation changed this rule because of what happened. We, uh, uh, Derek was on a scramble through the ball and the kid jumps up and gets knocked out of bounds, neither feet, feet, feet in bounds. But back then, if you caught the, if you would have caught it landing in bounds, mm-hmm. it would be a touchdown. So they gave us the touchdown and then we go into triple overtime and, and, and win the, 
win the game. But if it was today's rules, Carmel would have won that state championship. Yeah, and and, and it probably didn't help either that uh, the NFS H is NFHS is is located there in Indianapolis. So they probably had a, yeah. a pretty pretty good look at that one, I would think, and that's why it happened. John uh, Hart on the line, Brownsburg High School in Indiana, and now we we pull it uh, full circle. Uh, I guess it's what uh, four years ago now uh, that you got the the job at Brownsburg. Uh, put on the Chamber of Commerce hat there a little bit. I told people at the beginning it's you know northwest of, of Indianapolis. What type of community is? How is how does high school football fit into the fabric of that community? Well, we jumped in between. We were at Huntley, Illinois, had four great years there. Then we decided to to move back to be closer to to our kids, and uh, they're all still here in central or south central uh, Indiana. Brownsburg is one of the the greatest communities you'll ever be around. We uh, we average around six thousand people per game. Nice. Uh, so when when people think it's a it's a basketball state, and basketball and wrestling are are huge in this state. Football, there's nothing like it in this state, and especially around the Indianapolis area. But uh, uh, you know, we had six Division One kids last year. We've got four Division One kids here. Uh, we're just kind of a middle income uh, community that uh, uh, that has the three prongs. To, so any young coach out there, the three prongs to success are not what you think they are. It's it's a, a superintendent, a principal, and an athletic director that are committed. To, to, to you having success. Uh, when you have those three, like what I have right here, uh, man, not only do we have a great chance of having success, which we have, uh, but man, your, your life, you, you feel good about stuff, man. They give us the tools here. Mm-hmm. That's great to hear. Uh, Brownsburg High School uh, in Indiana. Uh, we're talking to uh, John Hart, the head coach there. And, uh, you know, a lot of people around the nation know about the Mick, the the Warren Centrals, the Carmels, uh, you know, uh, Center Grove. I mm-hmm. uh, can rattle them off. And, and, and I'm assuming that maybe the success there is has kind of probably helped the schools that are out and around there like you guys are, right? I think you beat Ben Davis uh, week one or week two last week, right? So, 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 so is it kind of, you know, all boats being lifted up as a result of, of the Mick and, and what that success has been for them? You know, it really has. And, and they, those schools have done an incredible job over the years. And you've, you, you, you hit the pillars of, of, of big school football in the state of Indiana right there. And, uh, yeah, we, we decided when we came in, we, we had a four year plan that at the fourth year, we wanted to start playing teams that, uh, that would challenge us. So we'd have a chance to be more successful in the playoffs and uh, the first one was we'd never played, we'd never beaten Ben Davis before. And uh, last year we, uh, we we beat them. I'm sure they'll be ready for us again this year. And uh, and then we scheduled St. X and uh, out of Cincinnati. And uh, we, we had them on the ropes and got a pump locked uh, uh, last year. So learning to compete at that high level and, uh, is something I'm excited about. Uh, when I, you know, when I've interviewed, uh, I've always talked about one thing is, you know, what's your goal? And, and, and if it's to win a conference or have a lot of success or whatever else, then I really wasn't interested. I, I want somebody that wanted to win championships. And uh, if we don't, if we don't do it, that, that's, that's, that's fine. It's a part of the process. Not everybody does, but being committed to to winning it means everything to me. And, and uh, we have that in this community. Yeah, uh, John Hart on the line. Uh, they did finish in our algorithm. We do statewide, uh, national, but also statewide. Uh, number seven in the state of Indiana, seven and four. A couple of big games against Avon. I guess if we want to talk about some of the teams that are up and coming, if you will, in the state of Indiana, uh, you guys dueled twice. That's one of the interesting things, right, about the Hoosier State. Um, you know, if you get it done usually during the regular season, oh, by the way, you might have to do it a second time. And we know how hard that is. And you guys had a couple of duels, didn't you? Yeah, they're 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 our natural rival as well, and I, I really think if we hadn't beat them, they would have won the state championship last year. They were they were a great team, coached by a Hall of Fame guy and, and Mark Bless. Uh, but uh, the, the second game was here, and, and like you said, they don't seed teams in the state of Indiana, which I, I don't think makes any sense at all. But mm-hmm. uh, they don't they don't seed them, and you play in your same pod all the time. So uh, us, Ben Davis, Avon, typically Pike, we, we play each other in the regular season and turn around and have to play, and yet your success in the season means nothing. So you might play 
Uh, last year, I think we were number two and Avon was number one, and we played in the in the first round of the playoffs. <laughs> Not nothing fair about that. I uh, I agree with you, as you can tell. I, I know a lot about a lot of states, uh, and uh, it's one of the things that has always kind of made me shake my head a little bit. But you know, it's also the beauty, right? The beauty of high school football. Uh, John Hart on the line, Brownsburg High School, and uh, talking a little bit uh, about the the t- the team and the and the schools around it. So let's kind of just dive into it. You mentioned you, you you lost some good kids, but you got some coming back. So let's talk a little bit about the off season heading into 2020. What are the, some of the things you're doing in the, in the weight room? You said you've got a, I guess you got a, a sports period right there for weightlifting and all that, but what are, what are some of the things you need to do to get this team ready for 2020? Well, we, we've got all of our offensive line back and two of those guys are division one. Josh sales is, it's got numerous uh, power five offers. He's six, six, 300 and, and uh, Pete Niagara is six, four, uh, to uh, 275, and he's got uh, I think six Mac offers. So we we have all five offensive linemen coming back. That helps. Uh, yes, yes. We have uh, one receiver who's verbally committed to uh, to Purdue, and uh, a second receiver that uh, I think a lot of people have missed out on. He's he's so far he's one of the fastest kids. It's uh, named Luke Lacey. So we have two two really. Gifted receivers. Our quarterback uh, is uh, Ben Easters. He's verbal to Kansas. Um, a big kid, six four, two hundred, uh, can really sling it. So we have to develop a running back. Our running back is now at Ball State. Uh, so we got to develop a running back. And then when we flip over to the other side, uh, we we've got to develop our defensive backfield. Our entire group graduated. Two two are playing NAIA, and one is playing in the uh, playing for Air Force, so uh, so we've got to develop those guys and that kind of speed on the back end. Otherwise, I have a feeling we'll get exposed. And one of the things you talked about there is challenging the program. Um, and we're talking to John Hart, by the way, as we wrap things up here. But one of the things that I love right now, and, and I'm not talking about the cross country matches, but I like when like Indiana goes to, as you said, Ohio and takes on a St. X and all that. Uh, is that something you're a, a proponent of? You like challenging yourself outside of the state? Well, Cathedral are one of the real good five A, uh, oh, great five yeah. A teams in the in the state. Uh, we're scheduled. It's scheduled between us. And work, the two of us work to go play teams uh, in Ohio or Kentucky or any place we can play them to where we can play, uh, you know, hopefully nationally ranked teams, which uh, St. X was for a long time uh, last year. So that's that's what our goal is, is to kind of have that exposure and, and yet kind of get out of playing the same teams uh, all the time. So, yeah, I love it. We did it at Warren and, and played in uh, – several uh, ESPN games and stuff and, uh, and that exposure to our, our our school and our community and, and most importantly high school football was was pretty exciting yeah no no doubt about it and as we wrap things up here uh, coach I, I, I guess uh, the the obvious question is uh, you probably didn't ever think about being the youngest ever but uh, if it turns out that you're one or two which it it appears to be does that mean anything special to you well, we were joking, but I was telling my assistants that I was getting ready to have this interview, and and uh, and they all congratulated me. My kids congratulated me, and I go, I go, really, all I was was born early. <laughs> I didn't actually accomplish anything, but in the end, it's got. Uh, and, and usually, if you take over a program that was down like Edwards County was, uh, typically you uh, you don't stay very long. You become an assistant after that because it, it usually gets you. So I got really fortunate to have some great kids. So, uh, but it was, uh, it's been a great journey. And like I said, I, I don't know how much longer I'll, I'll coach. I, I hope 10 years. I, I always tell people if Nick Saban can do it 10 years older than me at, at, uh, <laughs> at Alabama, I think there's a lot less stress in high school football. So. Just a little bit. <laughs> And then you know what? Because uh, we didn't, you, you mentioned a couple. I think a couple of your coaches there, but let's let's wrap up with that big question too, which is, you know, um, let's do it this way. What do you look for when putting a staff together and some of the guys there that uh, make you look good and get you to that point where you were win about seventy five percent of your games? I, passion's probably the number one thing. I I uh, joke about this. I, I, I've I've been blessed. Everybody's. Every place I've been, the assistant has taken over the head, the head job, and, and they too have had great success. So we splintered out and have a lot of head coaches out everywhere. 
uh, you know, the, the tough gig is if you're calling plays for me and JT Whitaker is my guy, uh, if you're, if your last name's not hard, you're not used to the, uh, verbal language that, that I use when I'm displeased. Uh, and, and so you, you gotta love me because if you don't love me, then you, you probably think I'm the devil. So, uh, uh, but, uh, I, I think again, we, we really invest each other and, in, and, in, uh, and if you're invested in, in have passion, I think everything else kind of comes together. Yeah, I agree. And uh, just thank you for what you've been doing for such a long time, Coach. Uh, Glad you could come on here and shed a little light on Brownsburg and all the other places you've been. But uh, thanks for being a high school football coach. And now uh, maybe just uh, the youngest ever. There's there's no trophy with that, but uh, you you at least get the uh, notoriety from uh, from our our show, I guess. (laughs) There you go. All right, man. I sure appreciate what you do. I read your stuff all the time. It's great. Thank you very much. So here's where our search currently is. Uh, John Hart, at least for now, is in the lead as the youngest uh, head football coach ever hired in America at the varsity level. Uh, Joe Catalico, who is the current head coach at uh, Roseville High School in Northern California, also hired at the age of 22. He was hired at uh, Overfelt High School in San Jose, California in the late 90s. We're waiting to hear from Coach Catalico to see exactly when he was hired. And of course, if uh, there's some other ones out there that we haven't uncovered yet, please feel free to reach out to us at HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. I'm Jeff Fisher, and you've been listening to the High School Football America podcast.